Another thing I'd like to draw your attention to uh, in Jekyll and Hyde are actually differences between the literary songs and the, uh, the musical. And uh, this brings us back to the story of Les Miserables again, but not the central plot of, uh, of Jean Valjean and his redemption, but the female characters and the female subplots. If you read Stevenson's novella, there are hardly any female characters. Um, Henry Jekyll does not have, if I remember, uh, the fiancé. There is not a uh, um, hooker with a heart of gold. There is just a female servant working in the, uh, in the house of, uh, of Dr. Jekyll. And she's the only female character. Um, <clears throat> and, and even uh, she is very, very secondary. Of course, this wouldn't fly in a musical because the musical thrives on love subplots, on duets, on dramatic emotions. <clears throat> and uh, we have uh, quite a lot of that in uh, Jekyll and Hyde. So they were added to the plot to make the plot more, I would say, musical friendly. So of course, uh, we have the two sides of personality of the poor Dr. Uh, Dr. Jekyll, but we also have two important women in his life, like the partners, one for Jekyll and one for Hyde. So the partner for Dr. Jekyll is Emma. She is uh, like Joanna, like Cosette. Uh, she is the sweet, innocent Victorian maid uh, who is goodness and kindness incarnate, who stands by her beloved up to the bitter end, uh, if, you, uh, if you remember, it all ends at the wedding that, um, that Emma and, uh, and uh, Henry are about to have. Uh, but Hyde, um, you might say, intervenes. So uh, there is Emma and uh, then there is Lucy. Again, another character who's, uh, who's absent from the original uh, novella and uh, she's a prostitute. So a little bit like Nancy from Oliver and a lot like Fantine from, uh, from Les Miserables. So she's the queen of the, uh, of the torch song. We have this big torch song um, towards the end uh, of, the, uh, of the show, A New Life. I would say it's very effective. It's just repeating whatever new things Lucy wants in life. Uh, and the whole relationship between Lucy and Hyde seems a little bit, I would say, pushed because uh, possibly the way that Hyde is presented in, uh, in the musical, he does not deserve this sort of emotion or this sort of devotion from this uh, this unfortunate woman whom he spoiler alert kills in the end of course uh, because uh, he cannot have we cannot have a confrontation of two women as well on the on the musical uh, stage there might be there is like a symbolic confrontation in the song in his eyes but both female uh, characters talk about two different men in a way. So one talks about Henry, another one talks about Edward. Um, I wasn't uh, much convinced by the relationship aspect of, uh, of Hyde and, uh, and Lucy, but perhaps there is a grain of truth in it. It shows a very twisted, a very um, tragic, relationship of a woman who is probably very well used to being abused, uh, to being brutalized. She never had a, a moment of kindness in her life and all the men she met were, uh, were just there um, to abuse her body. So at best they were indifferent, at worst uh, they were violent like, uh, like Hyde. So perhaps there is a, a, a hint of, again, a cautionary story uh, about um, a woman who, uh, who 
clutches desperately at uh, a very bad, a very um, ill semblance of a relationship because uh, she's so starved of human emotion and human uh, human relations uh, which she never had in her in her life uh, so uh, that's uh, that's what we have the um, madness takes over and of course uh, of course uh, you might say Jekyll kills Hyde but in fact Jekyll kills himself uh, so this is uh, this is what happens uh, if we look at other musicals with uh, <clears throat> an important gothic trope, <clears throat> you have quite a lot of musicals by Frank Wildhorn have it. Uh, I would say probably the most interesting <clears throat> besides uh, Jekyll and Hyde is, and, and uh, the, the Scarlet Pimpernel, which is not gothic, which is kind of um, heroic, is um, Dracula from uh, 2004. If you liked the Francis Ford Coppola version of Dracula, this is uh, uh, what the musical version of Dracula was based on. I, um, I've seen a few versions. I was not really convinced by the English language version, but I found the German language version, which you can find online with subtitles, uh, much better. So it's probably in the staging, maybe in the actors. Um, so possibly this is something to look up if you want more uh, of that sort. Uh, then there was uh, uh, another originally German production, Tanz der Vampire, The Dance of the Vampires, uh, based on a, a vampire comedy uh, film by Roman Polanski, uh, The Fearless Vampire Hunters. Um, again, a lot of humour, not entirely silly, uh, and uh, the vampires that symbolise something threatening, um, so the, the lure of sexuality, the lure of social advancement, the dream, of course, the impossible dream of, uh, of immortality and uh, uh, the dangers that gaining immortality would pose uh, in, uh, in humans. So um, there were uh, Polish stagings of the Dance of the Vampires and Jekyll and Hyde actually saw it in uh, uh, real life. Uh, in Poland. It was quite good. Uh, and next week, again, we have to do the online uh, version. I'm very, very sorry about that because this is the musical I like the most and that I would like to discuss with you. So to share your opinions and your, uh, your um, feedback on this and this is Andrew Lloyd Webber's uh, Phantom of the Opera. Again, if you do not know this musical, do not start with the film version. I have a lot of problems with the film version. Um, the main problem is again, just like with Sweeney Todd, the actors are too pretty. And I think it's unnecessary. There are other problems. They cannot sing, especially, well, if you have the Phantom of the Opera who cannot sing, this is a big problem. Uh, because the, the main attraction of this character is that he can sing. Um, anyway, uh, so try to find uh, a stage version. The uh, Jubilee 25, uh, um, 25th year anniversary uh, with Ramin Karimlu and uh, Sierra Bogus. It's a good version from Royal Albert Hall. Uh, or any other stage version. There are some bootlegs, including the original cast of uh, Michael Crawford and Sarah Brightman. Uh, if you feel brave, Try to find other versions of the story of the Phantom of the Opera. There are quite a few other musicals, sometimes with the title The Phantom, sometimes with the title The Phantom of the Opera. And if you feel really, really brave, 
There is a sequel made by Andrew Lloyd Webber himself, entitled uh, Love Never Dies. I think it's horrible, but it has some nice music in it. If you're interested, um, yes, there is a staged, uh, um, there's a film stage performance from Australia. Uh, and you can find it, uh, hopefully, and watch it. So next week we'll talk about this one story, probably from different angles and probably from different uh, musicals. But the main musical will be the Andrew Lloyd Webber 1986 mega musical, The Phantom of the Opera. And thank you for this week. Hello. I've watched through the, uh, the recordings from the previous semester and I was thinking what to add to you because I generally agree with what I said uh, in, uh, in the spring but uh, I thought that perhaps you might be interested a little bit more in gothic humour and especially the work of Tim Barton. I mentioned Tim Barton already because he directed the film version of Sweeney Todd, but uh, his credentials in the gothic musical uh, go further. Uh, some of you may be familiar with his animated films, which are kind of musicals in, the, in their own right. Uh, so um, work like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas or Corpse Bride, uh, which are dark, which deal with uh, death, but at the same time they have this kind of weird sweetness and they are charming and, and generally uplifting. So it doesn't mean that the gothic musical will always be a tragedy. In fact, as you probably noticed already, uh, most musicals, even the darkest ones, have some sort of um, comic relief and some sort of uh, humor, even uh, as it was in case of, uh, of uh, Sweeney Todd, very dark human, uh, humor. But you might have, um, I would say, a more charming humor as well. And this is, uh, this is quite characteristic for uh, for the work of uh, of Tim Barton. One of his uh, films, which was not originally a musical, has uh, fairly recently been uh, um, musicalized and uh, transferred to a theater stage. Uh, the title is Beetlejuice. You may recall perhaps uh, the old film with Winona Ryder. Uh, this is again a kind of um, sweet, uh, almost family-friendly story um, with some ghosts. So we have this kind of classical gothic tropes of the supernatural. Uh, the title character is some sort of demon probably and there are some ghost characters and they, uh, they hound a, a family home of, uh, of um, the, uh, the um, young teenage girl and uh, and her her family. So uh, this was an interesting uh, musical uh, that uh, had a surprising um, renewal, I would say, of the career thanks to the social media. Uh, you may want to uh, look up the. Um, the internet reviews uh, and uh, uh, the uh, little films made by uh, by the fans of the theatre uh, that uh, talk more about the uh, the unusual career of Beetlejuice, the uh, the musical, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's again a very good combination of uh, the gothic tropes, especially here dealing with the fear of death. Uh, but it's all laughed at and perhaps even laughed off. Um, some, more, uh, some more titles of gothic comedies. Um, Young Frankenstein or The Addams Family. Again, uh, one of the shows that were, uh, that were successfully staged in Poland. And it's, it's really a, a celebration of family values. 
so we do not really have anything too scary or dark it's just uh, um, a charming family of uh, eccentrics uh, based on a, uh, on an old uh, comedy tv series which originally um, was uh, um, sometimes interpreted as a, as a show about immigrants so people coming from some exotic location with unfamiliar customs uh, and being treated as um, as misfits <clears throat> and the last title i'd like to uh, to draw your attention to in uh, in this little sub genre of gothic humor is um, <clears throat> the little uh, the little shop of horrors it's also based on a uh, on a film which was in itself a kind of dark comedy about uh, um, carnivorous and eventually uh, man-eating plant that's uh, uh, being uh, cared for by a shy man working in some sort of shop. Uh, this, uh, this musical is uh, interesting uh, formally. It uses a lot of interesting, um, interesting um, uh, techniques. For example, a chorus. There are three women who, who follow the action and they, they really um, act like chorus in ancient greek tragedies or ancient greek theater plays uh, commenting on everything so it's it's quite interesting um the uh, the plot itself has a lot of uh, laughter um although it's quite dark laughter but uh, again it's not it's not entirely silly uh if you think about it it's uh, about how little mistakes or little bad actions uh, can snowball they can lead to more and more badness more and more evil entering uh entering the lives of the of the characters so it starts with giving the um the plant a little blood from one's own finger and it ends uh, with um, the carnivorous plants uh, basically taking over the town and, and eating everybody including the main character so um yeah it is a cautionary tale gothic stories are very often cautionary tales so um i leave you with that and uh, i'll see you after the christmas break and then we'll talk about the phantom of the opera thank you <laughs>